Welcome to the R video tutorial on determining the power of a test in R. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to calculate the power of a one-sided test and a two-sided test, as well as a one-sample test and a two-sample test. And I'm going to illustrate this just using two examples. All right, let's get started. Now, the first thing you're going to need to know is a lot of things in order to be able to calculate power, which confuses lots of people. But if you've already conducted your study and you found that you didn't have a significant result, you might want to look at the power to see whether or not your study was strong enough to give you that sort of result that you were looking for, a significant result. So the first thing we need to do is we need to understand what hypothesis we're testing. So here I have a hypothesis which is mu is equal to 5 or mu is greater than 5. This is a one-sided test and it's a one-sample test in the sense that I'm only interested in greater than or less than, so it's one-sided. It's a one sample test considering I only have one population. I don't have another mu1, mu2, mu3, mu4. Not only that, I've already taken a sample of size 12. This is my sample size. I already know this. So you're not going to be able to calculate the power if you don't know your sample size. I've already calculated a mean, 5.23, and I calculated a standard deviation, 1.32. And I need to know the significance level of my test, which is sig dot level. And I've chosen it to be 0 0.01. All right, the syntax is pretty straightforward once you understand what R is looking for. So the function you're going to use is called power.ttest. And it requires several arguments. The first one it's going to need is how big was your sample size? It wants to know the difference between your hypothesized value and your sample value. In this case, it's 5.23 minus 5. It needs to know the standard deviation. Oh, look, I made a mistake. It, it should be 3.2 because it should match up here. So make sure that these match up. Your significance level, 0 0.01. The type of test it is, this is a one sample. We only have one population, which we're interested in whether the mean is greater than 5 or not. And it's one-sided because we're only interested in greater than. So if I run all of this, it's fairly straightforward, and it gives you an answer, and we'll look at the output here. Okay, here's the output. One sample t-test power calculation. It gives you a lot of information back, just so that when you're looking at... Uh, printouts of this, maybe you've done several printouts, you can remember which scenario generated which power. So this is just for completeness. But notice, down here it gives you the power. And the power here is 0 0.036. So higher power means we have a much better ability to detect a difference if one exists. And in this case, with a sample size of 12 and the setup we had, we had about a 3% chance of actually finding a pattern or a difference when one really exists in the data or in the population. Okay, so your population has a difference away from five. What kind of power did we have to check it? Well, we would find it about 3% of the time if it really is different. Okay, so let's jump over to a two sample test. Okay, in this set test, we have two populations. Okay, so we have mu1 and we have mu2. So we have two different populations. And it's two-sided because we're interested in not equals. Now notice all of these things with the pound sign are commented out, so they don't actually run. They're just here to illustrate things. The syntax is very much the same. Here, I'm not going to go through and list everything out as above, but here in this test that I had, I had a sample size of 15. The difference between the two means was 1.6. The standard deviation, and this is a pooled standard deviation, and you need to go back in your statistics textbook and find out what that is, uh, was 2.14. The significance level I chose for my test is 0 0.02. The type of test is a two-sample test because I have mu1 and mu2, and the alternative is two-sided in the sense that I'm interested in not equals. Okay, So we can run this and see what the output looks like. And you will see that in this case, our power is much higher than the previous one. We would be able to find a difference if one existed between the two populations. If the two populations have a different means, uh, conducting a test with a sample size of 15, we'd be able to find that about 35% of the time. Now, it throws a note down here. 
n is the number in each group. So it's assuming that when you conducted your study that you chose 15 observations from population 1 and 15 observations from population 2. If you didn't do this, then this is incorrect. n here is not the total number, so you could have had 8 in one group and 7 in another group. It is the amount in each group, so just be aware of that. All right, so this has been the R video tutorial on determining the power of a test in R. If you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.